right? Like, where's your retraction? Where are you going to like send every single person who saw that saying, oops, I'm sorry. Leading up to elections, you get banned on Facebook, right? Right. So what that means is your personal Facebook page mm -hmm. gets banned, meaning you can no longer access Facebook as, as an individual and as collective evolution, because right. now all the admins of collective evolution are banned. And so basically it's like a, an empty ship, right? Yes. Like this, it's still there. We didn't ban you. Right. We didn't ban collective evolution, perfect but shadow nobody, ban. but it's a perfect <laughs> shadow ban. Nobody can post. Right. And then all of a sudden the, the election rolls through, Joe Biden is declared a winner. And the second that happens, boom, you're back. No yeah. explanation, no email, no nothing, correct? That's correct. Yeah, I actually got a message from a friend who said, hey, just for kicks, I went and like looked up your account today. And uh, did there. you know that your account's back? And I'm like, no way. So like, you know, I went and I looked and, and I was like, wow. And then I went and I looked at Arjun's because he was the other yeah, admin that got deleted. And I'm like, his is back. I'm like, you know, wow. I, I've spoken to a ton of people over the course of the last many years. And, you know, a lot of deletions, a lot of appeals, a lot of connections in that Facebook that people have Never tried. seen them come back. Never. I've never seen them come back. We we refer to this one period of time. I, I think it was 2016, late 2016, yeah. uh, where the, I call it the purge. There mm -hmm. was just a purge of a bunch of Facebook pages, all of which, some of which are what I would call alternative news. Some of which were conspiratorial for sure. Some of which were definitely in different categories. They were clickbait. A lot of them were clickbait. Yeah, let's let's just put it that way. There was yeah. a lot of like, let's try and engineer headlines that essentially get clicks, whether or not they're true or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And and it's like thing, you know, you can you can bring up conversations like, hey, were were there giants in North America before the the, the Europeans came? Yeah. And I, I don't know. Like I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea. Obviously our history books say that's not the case. But the but people ask questions and then they're like, Oh, we found this evidence that there might have been giantism right, right, in right. North America. Again, this is just a random topic, but why can't we Talk fantasize about, about that? Right, yeah. Why can't we play, pretend and say, maybe UFOs have landed here. Yeah. Maybe this thing is going down. Maybe, I don't, it doesn't matter what the, what the topic is. Why can't we have that conversation? Yeah. And that's what I don't like. And what I don't like about that is that they're doing it in a shadow way. Right. Because nobody knew that you got banned and you couldn't. Even when you, you get banned, you can't it. you can't say it. No. You you're muted. It's like yeah. it's like having your megaphone fully cut, and then you're you're banned from the public square. So how could you possibly what what can you do right to say anything other than okay? I guess you can send out a newsletter, but then they attack your newsletter. I guess you can go on Instagram, but they might ban you there. And and Facebook is owned by or, or Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yeah, so on and so forth. Right. So, but without a doubt, I saw people Instagram stories go from like thousands of views to less than 100 and the only way that you would see their instagram stories is that you went and searched them and then clicked on it yeah so you they weren't banned but they also had no capacity to then share their point of view right and what that meant is that somehow an algorithm or a person or both chose to say this person has a view that it might be seen as not true right and or might elicit some level of revolt or or hesitancy or con controversy or some level of like anti anti mainstream narrative right and then make the decision that that can't exist at this moment yeah it's it's a fascinating phenomenon and and uh, you know a lot of it you know we kind of saw coming in some regards um i will say that at this moment i have i just have no idea where to put my hand as i'm sitting here like it's it's like i feel like a lemon like I, I i i hope people don't you know judge my credibility by where my hand is but um uh i want to get to you in comedy later I, and, and your we can, use of comedy we can do this yeah. we can do this yeah. um I, I was going into a movie theater way back and gosh i had to have been like 2013 or 2014 probably mm -hmm. knew where to put my hand on that day but mm. um i we had just finished sending a message and I was joking around. It was like the meeting of the dons. Yeah. Um, and essentially it was saying to a whole bunch of like prominent websites that were, um, you know, in the alternative newsy space or in the like, Hey, let's talk about some mysterious stuff space sort of yep. thing. Yep. A lot of, a lot of popular pages that are out there. People probably know a lot of, of the ones that they were. Some of them, a lot of them actually got purged. Yeah. Um, and I pulled together a lot of the top admins and I said, Hey, like, I think it's important that we, we start mm -hmm. communicating. We set up some, not only ground rules for how to conduct ourselves, but, um, but being careful, being more careful because 
if we're not more careful about what's happening, then like there's eventually going to be repercussions because there was a lot of, like you were saying, like, Hey, here's a headline. Here's a, here's an article. And like, it was a wild west. So it was like, let's say yeah. somebody on our site, let's say, and this happened all over the place. So then nobody, happened everywhere. Right. Nobody's like super, like nobody's you know, immune. Even collective immune. evolution right. is not immune. Yeah. It's like, you would see an article and then you would say, okay, it, you know, this is going viral. Like, let's, let's write about it. this. Yeah. Right. So you would, you would, you, what we would do as a company is we'd, we'd go, okay, is this true? And we'd, we'd look through and we'd verify it and we'd like do the work and we whatever. Then we would write our take on it and put our own spice on it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas what was happening in most of the other spaces was, okay, like this article is going is it viral. viral. Right. Yeah. Then they would just copy. Yeah. Paste. Yeah. Print. Yeah. Right. And there was no vetting in, in the process. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and slowly but surely it was like, I was, you know, you're watching as like you know, fake news is being spread. Like it's happening. Yeah. Right. I, I've, like the obviously fake news. Yes. Yeah. And so, so there was, there was this discussion like way back when to say, Hey guys, we got to clean this up. Yeah. And, and we also got to be more supportive of each other. Like in a sense of like, if you know, let's not link steal, let's not steal. Like if somebody wrote a really great headline, let's not steal it every time. Or even, or even this, cause this is a little bit of an interesting phenomenon. It's like, you know, we were, we had the root as a company, which this isn't a, a judgment on other companies. This was, this is the choice we made, right? Yeah. The choice we made was to say, we're going to print everything original, yeah. right? And so we hired writers and we paid those writers to write the original content. Yeah. Whereas other sites took a different approach where they said, I'm just going to copy paste from everywhere. They were republishing. Right. Yeah. And, and so what would happen is like, I'm spending money to produce content that yeah. then someone's just taking right away. And then they're coming to like, our share for share deals and they're like trying to share them before we can get ours out. Yeah. So it's like, I'm spending money for them to make money. And, and so it was kind of like this, like, okay, the most important thing is the message getting out, especially if it's true. Right. Sure. But and at the, the same the time, topic is important. Right. At the same time, it's like, there, there's so much cannibalization that was happening where yeah. it was like, yeah, sure. If you're a single person, that's like just copy and pasting 10 articles a day, you know, you can sit there and make a ton of money. Well, an organization who's trying to vet information and like do it properly, you know, yeah. My, my position as, on it is it's doing properly, properly right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hurting because you're, you're taking away all of my heart, you know, all of our hard work. And so we, we kind of said, hey, that is part of a ground rule we need to discuss. Maybe we can find a, a fair, you know, collaboration there. And then there was the other aspect of, hey, let's clean it up. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, there were more sites that would emerge that would like, you know, well, Mel Gibson said, um, you know, there's satanic pedophiles in Hollywood. And it's like, well, hold on a second. It's like, we know Mel Gibson didn't say that because there's absolutely no record of Mel Gibson saying that. So unless this one single journalist from a particular thing somehow met with Mel Gibson for lunch that day and then just said this and there was no source and there was a, like, it's, there's so many of those stories that happen that touch on things that like, yeah, there might be some truth to that. Yeah. There it's I like, I could see how that's possible, but this particular story is not credible. Yeah. That was starting to, f to just flood the internet. Yeah. And during that time. And mm -hmm. so it was like, you knew this was coming to some extent, right? Yeah. So that's a very important piece to throw into the mix as we kind of move into the next phase, which is to say after the purge where a lot of those types of pages got removed and, and funny enough, a lot of the admins of those pages spoke to me afterwards and they were like, you know, honestly, it was kind of a relief as much as it sucked. Yeah. I didn't want to do it anymore anyway. There's a lot of people that felt that way. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were just kind of trapped and stuck in it. So like the people who weren't necessarily as passionate about it, yeah, they were almost like pushed out. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and and those that were passionate are still around today they're doing it they came back you know, somehow right yeah. mm -hmm. and so it, it's interesting but uh then it goes into the censorship part of it which you know i i absolutely think that there's some some channel batting that sh shadow banning that goes on mm -hmm. um i there's obviously algorithmic stuff which really is driven by shareholders it's driven by the idea of needing to make more money all the time more money all the time right so that's that's a piece of the puzzle but there is something else that goes on. There's, it's very obvious. It's just really hard to explain it. You mm. have to be in it every day. You yeah. have to like, like we I got to, I know what you're going to say. Right. Like we got to a point where between me and Arjun, like we, we knew when something was up, like you mm -hmm. could tell, yeah, right? You could feel it. And then, and then it got to the point where they introduced the fact checking and yeah. the fact checking was, it was like a, a sneaky way of saying like, I'm going to, tarnish your company image yeah i'm going to limit your reach and i i have a lot of control over how i limit your reach meaning yeah if i give you a fact check you basically have a cool down period of all your reach 
And then when they remove that fact check, you have like this warm up period that's going to take a while. And then like a day later, they just give you another fact check. Yeah. And they just keep doing that. Right. Yeah. And, and almost, uh, you know, and do that enough and your algorithmic momentum is, is gone. And, that, and a lot of this kind of stuff, a lot of social media does operate on momentum. Mm-hmm. Kind of, it's kind of like a sport. Like yeah. it's, it's like, there's like a, there's like a flow. It's like water. You can't, you know, it's not just like oh, on off. It's on a switch. It actually kind of like takes time to, yeah. to kind of build pressure and move, move through the system. And the, the crazy part is like, you can't defend yourself. Yeah. Right. So like they have this, this sort of all seeing, all controlling power of saying, yeah. there's an look, invisible like hand. This is, yeah, this is false. And I'm going to tell your whole audience is false. Even if me as the fact checker is wrong. And every time a fact checker has been wrong, which, I mean, we've worked with, like, Politico yeah. uh, on multiple occasions where they just email us back as soon as we challenge it, and they say, oops, this should never have been marked as false. Yeah. And I'm like, well, thanks. Like, we just spent 24 hours of you parading around this big gray box that said yeah. our company is not credible. Yeah. Right? Like, where's your retraction? Where are you going to, like, send every single person who saw that saying, oops, I'm sorry? Yeah. And this is, like, this is kind of, like, these are the little things that people aren't necessarily... Um, able to, to always appreciate that yeah. is going on like perhaps the odd per, the average person out there who maybe supports um the idea of, of fact checking right which i can see where that position comes from because they're like well look at all the fake news that i just finished talking about five minutes ago absolutely right? that's the whole point point. and then so now those people are going oh well yeah well we need it and it's like i kind of agree with you but i would never censor somebody and i would never delete their shit i would i would encourage people to learn how to discern better yeah. how to read information like empower the end user the reader don't don't just go punish companies like in a broad stroke yeah and then not have any way of like saying oops yeah we actually completely screwed up on this one yeah and and i think candace owens recently had a situation where she was fact checked for something that was, you know, like in most of the cases, like probably 95% of the cases that we get fact checked for, it's all the fact checkers mistake. Like they're wrong, yeah. like flat out, they're just wrong. Yeah. Um, and so they did it to her. And I mean, in her situation, she was got the daily wire supporting her. So they, you know, they're lawyers too. Right. Yep. So they just went after Facebook and they're just big enough that they can do they something can do about it. it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so sure enough, they, they overturned and they apologized and it was, you know, it got coverage because she's Candace Owens and because Daily Wire is big and they can do that and they can make a noise about it, right? Yeah. And she said, you know, a great quote, she was essentially saying something to the effect of, um, you know, I, I'm only able to like survive this because I actually have the means to fight and get something about it. Like she's like, think of all the people that have no means to go after these fact checkers. And I'm like... <laughs>